Today, I'm gonna walk you through how to create the Sakura crossbody purse. Uh, this is my uh, design, my pattern, and the pattern is available in my Etsy store. The link to the pattern is in the description box below. Uh, this is a full written instructions pattern, so when you purchase it, uh, it's gonna come with a step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, how to create the back. Um, this video serves as a, a visual support to the pattern and it's not intended to replace uh, the pattern itself. Um, so this purse features the uh, front accent panels. It has a back zipper pocket that fits a cell phone. Inside, it's fully lined, of course, and it features, uh, this version features two slip pockets. In the pattern that you purchase from the Etsy store, uh, the lining has additional features. It has uh, instructions how to create a card slot packet and an inside zipper packet. So you can choose which features of the lining you prefer and create your version. You can mix and match. Uh, also, this uh, line of design uh, comes with a little sister pattern. It's a, a small wristlet called Sakura Mini. It features a back zipper packet. It features the same design of the front panels. And inside it has a card slot. So this pattern uh, you can also purchase in my Etsy store. Uh, and it also has a, a video tutorial created by uh, Saya Swagbacks channel by uh, Kasaya. I will link this uh, video tutorial in a description box below. Uh, if you like my videos and you would like me to create more tutorials, please make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel and to give the video a like. Uh, also, uh, consider joining my Facebook group uh, for up-to-date updates on my pattern releases and any information on promotions and discount codes. Um, the link to the Facebook group is in the description box below. Today I'm going to show you how to create this Sakura uh, crossbody purse design. Uh, if you would like to see me creating this colorful version of the purse, please keep watching. We're gonna start with prepping all our pattern pieces. Uh, as you can see, I cut out uh, all the pattern pieces with my uh, little addition of the slip packet uh, inside instead of having the card slots and the zipper packet. Uh, so you can uh, follow what I did uh, in the video and I will provide the measurement for the packet or uh, you can um, follow the packet that it's written with the uh, card slot packet and uh, the zipper packet. So here is a quick list of our pattern pieces. You're gonna have the accent front panel cut in from vinyl, the back upper panel that needs to be also cut in vinyl or cork, and our accent front panel that needs to be cut in vinyl. Then you're gonna have your main front piece in your accent fabric and two lining panels, the back uh, lower panel, and this uh, can be done in vinyl uh, or uh, other fabrics. This time around I choose to use a waterproof canvas because uh, that matches my color scheme, uh, but uh, you can use um, quilting cotton, just make sure that if you are using a thinner material, you're gonna interface it with a, a Decovil Light or Sofuse Plus. Um, then I'm gonna have my interfacing for my front panel, uh, the lining for my back pocket and the lining for my uh, slip pocket inside, two zippers, my hardware, so anything that is needed to create the strap, the full list is in the listing on Etsy. Some rivets, my uh, D-ring tabs, and my zipper tabs. So that's all the materials that are needed to start our project. And what you want to start with is prepping the front panel. 
you're gonna start with interfacing the front panel of your purse that you cut out from your accent fabric. Uh, I like to have my interfacing out of the way of the seam as my patterns are designed for domestic machines and I'm trying my best to make sure that uh, everybody uh, can produce uh, the pattern. So let's uh, keep the bulk to the minimum. Uh, that said, I'm gonna now interface my front panel. My front panel is now interfaced. Uh, our next step is to attach our accent panel, the front accent panel. I like to uh, embellish my uh, panels a little more uh, by giving them a scalloped edge. Uh, that's something that is optional, so you can leave your panels with just a straight, straight edge, or you can use a uh, pinking shears uh, to give them a little more uh, embellishment with the scalloped edge, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I have my panel prepped. I'm gonna use double-sided tape to help me Keep the panel in place while I'm sewing it on. I'm placing the double-sided tape inside a little bit. I don't want my needle to hit the tape while I'm sewing because that sometimes makes the needle um, have the glue residue on and that's not a good thing. So you have your double-sided tape on. You want to fold your panel in half to find the middle point on the bottom edge. And um, the panel is is the same size. So if you are using uh, just a regular pattern, that's fine. But if you're using a directional pattern uh, fabric, just make sure, first of all, you're gonna in uh, interface it the right way. So you want the interfacing towards the bottom of your panel and you're gonna place the uh, small accent panel also towards the bottom of your print. So I have that prepped. I'm gonna make sure that I have the middle part. And now I'm gonna maybe create a little snip on, in my panel. And now I'm gonna place the panel in the middle of the front of my back. So when you have that placed and you're happy with how it looks, take it to the machine and top stitch along those edges with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Now that we have the first accent panel sewing to, the, to our front of the purse, we're gonna repeat that with the top uh, panel. So I'm gonna create the scalloped edge along the rounded bottom edge. after your edge it's scalloped and here's the tip if you see your vinyl has a little fray little threads you can use a lighter to just melt those away but just be careful and quick because obviously vinyl it's it's gonna melt if you're gonna overheat it so now i'm happy with the look of my panel I'm gonna take my double-sided tape and place couple strip on the back of the panel. Right 
remove the backing of the tape it doesn't always want to cooperate and now we're gonna align our panel with the top edge of our front accent fabric and press it on to make sure that it's affixed to the panel while we are sewing it on. When you have that prepped, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch it along this curved edge with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. And then you're gonna baste along those uh, three straight edges. Now that we have our upper panel attached, uh, it's a good time also to now um, attach your uh, back tag or your name tag. Uh, it's going to be the easiest uh, time uh, to do so if you wish to have a back tag. Now, the last thing to do is just uh, create the darts on the corners of our front panel. To do that, you're going to use the um, template of the front of the back and uh, you have the darts drawn here you're not supposed to be cutting anything so make sure you do not cut it but you use this as the references so what you want to do you want to flip it over so you have the wrong side up place the template use a marking tool to mark um, the darts on the outside edges first when you have that marked, you're gonna fold the panel so the side and the bottom edge align. Make sure you have that. You, you can maybe clip it with a clip to make sure it doesn't shift. Use the template. to mark where the dart is supposed to end. And uh, repeat that on the other side. Now that you have both sides marked, you're not gonna also cut anything you're gonna keep it folded you can clip it in place so make sure that your panels won't shift and you're gonna connect those two points with a stitch so you're gonna stitch right from the point on the edge to the point inside of your panel to create a dart and repeat the same thing on the other side. Now that uh, our darts are created, uh, we are done with prepping our front panel. We can now move on to working on the back panel. So you want to start with the lower panel of the back of the bag. Um, so you're going to mark it up based on provided uh, template. So you wanna make sure you have the zipper placement uh, and leg length marked. Uh, I prepare my zipper, so I mark the middle point of my zipper tape. I place some double-sided tape on one edge and I marked the points. This is the middle to uh, the end of my zipper opening point. So I know where my seam is supposed to run. So when I have the zipper prepped, I'm going to remove the backing of the double-sided tape and I'm going to place my zipper on that line, making sure it's centered. Now that my zipper is affixed to my panel, I'm going to take it to the machine and sew from that point to that point only making sure I backstitch on both ends uh, with the 1 fourth of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. 
now that my zipper is attached to my panel and it's on the right side of the panel and the zipper uh, it's side side down that's how we want it we're gonna work on attaching our packet lining uh, I placed a piece of double-sided tape uh, just above the stitch you want to make sure it's above the stitch I'm gonna remove the backing and I'm gonna place my lining along the zipper edge uh, right sides together so my lining and my uh, back panel are right sides together so now that my panel my aligning panel is affixed uh, to my unit I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew from the wrong side of the project making sure that my lining stays nice and open uh, behind the uh, outer panel and I'm gonna stitch following exactly the uh, seam we just created attaching the zipper and yet again make sure you're gonna back stitch on the beginning and on the end now my lining is attached to my zipper packet now I'm gonna create the cuts to be able to flip the zipper in the final position so you're gonna cut from the outside edge right to the first stitch of your seam and repeat that on the other side when you have that done you're gonna flip it over flip the zipper and you can take the panel to the ironing board and iron it if you are not using vinyl like I'm using waterproof canvas so I can iron it from the right side so uh, that's what I'm gonna do so make sure your panel is open and it looks like this you have those little corners and your zipper is in the correct final position and your lining is behind take it to the ironing board and press it when you press your zipper um, insert your zipper pull make sure that the zipper pull is inserted from the side that you want the zipper to close uh, this is going to be my back pocket and i like my zipper pull to be on the right side when it's closed so i'm going to insert it from the left side to the right let's press and prep our zipper after you pressed your panel this is how it should look like i inserted my zipper pull from the left to the right this is the front of the panel and this is the back of the panel so now we're gonna work on closing our zipper opening you want to fold the outer panel right in a place where uh, your first stitch is align the panel with the top of the zipper tape and clip it in place repeat that on the other side and when you have that uh, prepped take it to the uh, uh, machine and stitch from the top right to the first and last stitch of the zipper uh, seam so when you when you're sewing just make sure you are not sewing inside or outside you have to sew exactly in the place where the seam of the zipper uh, runs and now that you created the seams to enclose the zipper uh, we're gonna finish up our zipper opening by top stitching along the zipper opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length make sure that your lining still stays open behind the outer panel after the top stitching along our zipper tape is completed we're gonna work on our lining you're gonna place the project wrong side up bring the lining to the top edge and secure that with clips 
you're gonna align the sides of the lining and clip them together. And uh, you're gonna take it to the machine and sew. First, you're gonna close the sides of the uh, lining of the packet, making sure the outer panel stays out of the way of the seam. So you're gonna sew on both sides here. When you have that done, you're gonna baste the top of the lining of the packet to our outer panel. The lining of our packet is completed and secured. Now we're gonna attach the upper panel to our lower back panel. So place both panels right sides together and clip in place. When you have that done, you're gonna take it to the machine and sew along the top edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Uh, when you've done that, open the panel and just finger press it since it's vinyl so you can, we cannot use iron and top stitch along the edge on the vinyl side with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. The upper panel of our back of the purse is attached. Now we have to create our darts. So to do so we're going to use our template. have your points um, marked you are gonna uh, fold it on each side while you're sewing it so you're gonna make sure it's folded straight that those two edges uh, match and you're gonna create a seam connecting those two points so you're gonna sew from the edge to the end of the dart uh, make sure you backstitch on each end and repeat that on the other side of the panel now that our darts are created, uh, we can move on to work on our lining panels. And uh, like I mentioned uh, before, this lining it, it's not exactly how it is in the pattern and you are welcome to follow these instructions or just uh, stick to what is in the pattern. But I'm going to show you here uh, how to add um, a slip packet to the lining instead of having the uh, zipper packet and the card slots. So you're gonna take the panel that we cut for our packet and the panel size for the packet is 11 inches in width and it's 11 inches in height. So it's, it's just a square. Um, that makes it easy uh, when you are using uh, directional fabric so uh, you don't have to pay so much attention since you can use it uh, either way. So when you have that um, prepped, you're gonna fold the slip packet in half and uh, clip it along the long edge. When you have that prepped, you're gonna take it to the machine and sew it along the edge only with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. When you have that done, you're gonna turn the packet right side out and press it. And you can then top stitch on the right side of the packet along the folded edge to give the folded edge a little more strength. Now I have my packet panel ready. I'm gonna work on my lining panels. I need to create the darts before I can attach my slip packet to the lining. So once again, we're gonna repeat what we did previously on the outer panels. Repeat that on all four corners. Now that you have all four corners marked, you're gonna Take it to the machine. You're gonna fold all of them back. 
and connect those marks with a stitch. So sew from the outer edge to the top of the dart with the uh, 2.5 stitch length. And repeat that all four corners of both uh, lining panels. Now that your lining has the darts uh, on both panels, you can just choose one and um, make it flat as possible. You can put the darts up at this point because we want to make sure we have a flat surface to attach our slip packet. And you want to attach the slip packet just above uh, where the darts end. So make sure you are aligning the bottom of the uh, slip packet with the ends of the darts and secure that with pins. Making sure it's straight. And take it to the machine and top stitch along the bottom edge with the 1 8 of an inch uh, seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Then you can base uh, the sides onto the sides of the lining and uh, you can split the packet uh, into two or three packets, whatever um, suits you best. I think I'm gonna just create two equal packets. So I'm just gonna uh, run a seam from the bottom to the top, top stitch, come back one uh, length of the stitch and come back down and back stitch on both uh, beginning and the end of my seam. So that seam is gonna be also with a 3.5 stitch length. Now your packet, slip packet is attached to your lining, I created just a middle split, so I'm gonna have two slip packets. So now uh, we have the lining panels done, we can start working on our main zipper closure. So first, what you wanna do, you wanna make sure your zipper pull is on. And here I'm gonna show you how I put my zipper pull on. I split about an inch, inch and a half of the tape from the top and I start with placing the zipper pull halfway through on the left side of the tape. Then I place the other side inside the pull, making sure that my uh, teeth side of the zipper tape align. And I gently push the pull onto the tape. And just like that, you have your zipper pull on. So when you have your zipper pull on, you're gonna take your uh, zipper tabs that you cut out of your vinyl and you're gonna attach them on each end of the zipper. Uh, I prepped mine with a double-sided tape, so I attach some double-sided tape on two edges. It doesn't matter because they are squares, so you can just choose any address. You wanna fold it in half and place the tape and I see that my zipper is crooked so I'm just gonna trim my zipper and when you trim your tape you want to make sure it's melted so it's not gonna fray so now that I have my tape prepped I'm gonna wrap the end of the zipper in the top so you want to make sure it's folded in half you're going to place the zipper tape inside your top. And just to make sure, I'm going to secure it with the clips for now. And repeat the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to fold my top in half and insert my zipper tape. Now that you have your zipper prepped like this, take it to the machine and top stitch along the cut edges with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length on both sides, making sure you are catching the front and the back of the zipper top. My zipper tabs are so in. 
Now I want to attach uh, the zipper to uh, outer panel and I'm going to start with the back panel so keep that in mind when it comes to the zipper direction. I want both of my zippers to be closing in the same direction so I'm going to make sure that my zipper when closed the pull is on the right side as I'm seeing it right now. So I have my zipper ready. I want to make sure that I'm going to center it on the uh, back of the back panel and I'm going to clip, clip it to secure in place. When you have this prepped, uh, take it to the machine and base the zipper tape onto the back panel. Now that I have my zipper based onto the back panel, I'm going to attach the lining and I want my slip packet to be on the back of my purse. So I'm going to use the lining uh, with the slip packet on. Make sure you are placing those two panels right sides together and align the top edge with the top edge of the outer panel and secure in place. When you have that done, take it to the machine and sew along the top edge uh, with the 1 4 to 3 8 uh, seam allowance, whatever it's more comfortable for you, uh, and to 2.5 stitch length to attach those two panels together. When your lining is attached, you're gonna open the unit, you're gonna hand press the vinyl, and you're gonna take it to the machine and top stitch only from the end of the zipper tape to the other end of the zipper tape with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. So we are top stitching, catching both panels. Now that we have our back panel prepped, uh, this will make sense while we started with the back panel. We're gonna now work on attaching our D-rings. And to start, we have to now create our D-ring tabs first. You can make one long one and then cut it in half, which is faster, or just uh, do a two separate ones. Or whatever your fabric allows you. I had a, a small piece of vinyl so I decided to just use what I had and cut two. So again you're gonna use your double-sided tape, place a strip inside each of the D-ring tabs, Remove the backing. And fold the fabric inside. Making sure the two ends, two uh, row edges um, meet inside. You can use clips to enforce this because the, sometimes the tape is not strong enough and repeat the same thing on the other top. Now that you have your tabs prepped, you're gonna take them to the machine and top stitch along those two long edges with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. So the next step is to mark uh, where uh, we need to make our slits uh, for our D-ring tabs. Those measurements are provided in the pattern, so you're just gonna follow instructions to mark uh, your vinyl where you're supposed to make the little slits uh, for your D-ring. When you have them marked, just go ahead and cut. And uh, just a tip, I recommend to cut them a little bit smaller because you can always increase them but if they are a little tighter the uh, during tabs uh, just look better so try uh, to just uh, cut them right 
under the provided size or the size of your tabs depending if you are using a, a half an inch D-rings or an inch uh, D-rings. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my vinyl. Look out, don't cut your lining, just cut the vinyl. And when you have your slits made, take your D-ring tab, don't put the D-ring on, and insert it into the cut holes around an inch in. And this way, you wanna take it to the machine and do it on both sides, so oh, you, you have just one trip to the machine. And when you have that done, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna stitch it just above the slit. You wanna make sure that the slit is open because we are gonna put the other end of the top inside. So take it to the machine and sew just above the slit with a 2.5 uh, stitch length. Now your D-ring tabs are sewn in and when you sewing them in, like I said, you wanna sew above the slit so the slits remains open, but you wanna make sure you are catching the vinyl that uh, that is above the slip so that part of the vinyl is caught in your seam so when we have that done now we're gonna thread our d-ring on and pull the other end of the d-ring tab through the slit again And now when you have the vinyl a little, the slit cut a little short, then you get a nice tight fit. So that's what I like. If that's not something you're going for, that's fine. But uh, that's how I like it. So I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Make sure your bow tops are the same length, they should be around half an inch. And when you have that placement done, uh, you're gonna secure the tabs with rivets. So you're gonna place a rivet around one fourth of an inch below the slit in the middle. Make a mark and continue with securing the top with the rivets and you want to make sure that you're going through the vinyl and both ends of your uh, during top. And now we have our D-ring tops secure and ready for our purse strap. And now we're gonna move on to attaching the front of our bag. So you're gonna take your front panel and you're gonna align the other side of the zipper tape with the top edge of our front panel making sure that the back and the front panels are right sides together and make sure that all the sides of the panels are aligning and that means that the zipper is centered. Clip the zipper in place. Now that you have that clipped, uh, take it to the machine and base the zipper onto the front panel. Now that the zipper is based onto our front panel, we're gonna attach our lining. So you're gonna take the second panel of your lining and 
making sure that your darts are on the bottom you're gonna clip the lining to the top of our project making sure that the lining is centered and the upper edge aligns with the zipper now that you have that secured and both of your linings are right sides together and again the outer panels are both right sides together you're gonna take it to the machine and sew along the top edge with the same seam allowance you used for your initial zipper installation so anything between 1 4th and 3 8 uh, of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length when you have your lining attached you're gonna open the project you're gonna finger press those two panels and take it to the machine and top stitch along the top edge uh, repeating what we did on the back panel so just along the zipper tape and uh, you're gonna top stitch with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length now that you have your zipper attached to the front and the back panel we're gonna move on to the final purse assembly so what you want to do you want to clip those little corners created by the darts and you're gonna start clipping the outer panels right sides together and the lining panels right sides together make sure that your top seam align When you have uh, both your outer and your lining panels clipped all around, make sure you mark a five uh, inch opening in the bottom of your lining to remain unsewn so you can turn the project right side out. Also make sure that your zipper, your main zipper is around halfway through unzipped. And when you have everything prepped like this, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew all around. And making sure that your seam allowance on your outer panel is 3 8 of an inch and you will increase the seam allowance on your lining from 3 8 gradually to half an inch continue half an inch on the bottom uh, half an inch and gradually uh, return it to 3 8 of an inch uh, seam allowance so let's do that making sure that our top seams align nicely now that I have my back sewn all around, I want to trim the seam allowances here. So that's going to reduce the bulk when I turn my purse right side out. I'm just trimming them a little bit, not too much. And I'm going to work on turning my project right side out. You also may want to trim the darts again. After you turn your purse right side out, uh, make sure that everything is up to your satisfaction. All the packet zippers work. Uh, everything is aligned the way you like it. 
and then when you have that done we're gonna close our lining so you want to take the lining out of your purse and tack on the opening that will just make the fabric fold naturally inside so you want to make sure that the raw edges are folded inside you can press it with the iron or you can secure it with clips and take this to the machine and sew it or top stitch it along the opening with the 1 16 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length so my lining now it's closed and it's nicely fitted inside i also gave the purse a little bit of press so it looks nice and crisp now our last step is to create our a crossbody strap to do so i cut the piece of my webbing tape it's a one inch webbing tape because i'm going to be using one inch hardware if you're using a different size hardware obviously use a different uh, size webbing tape but to get us started we're gonna get all our supplies and start with installing our sliding adjuster so you want to put your webbing tape around the middle bar the sliding adjuster and secure that with rivets you can take it to the machine and you can sew it if you prefer that or if you don't have rivets but i like to uh, use rivet to secure my strap so that's what i'm gonna do When you have uh, the uh, tape uh, secure to the middle bar of the sliding adjuster, you're gonna just run through the tape, making sure the tape is not twisted, and you're gonna insert your swivel clasp, making sure the hook is on the bottom. Bring the webbing tape to the adjuster, thread it through, and over again this way your raw edge of the tape will be hidden behind the tape when the strap is completed so you have a nice clean look on the outside edge when you have that done you're gonna place your strap on the table again run through the tape making sure it's not twisted and attach your second swivel clasp making sure everything is in the same direction uh, and here on this end because this is going to be exposed i like to double fold it so i don't have a exposed edge visible and now again secure it with rivets And like that your strap is ready to use so now all we need to do is just attach our strap onto our d-rings and our purse is ready to use our project is now completed we created the sakura crossbody purse uh, it has a nice uh, final uh, accent panel on the front it has a really handy zipper packet on the back that fits a cell phone also inside it has plenty of room for your essentials and two slip packets uh, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial 
and if you did please make sure to give the video a like and to subscribe to my channel uh, if you would like to create your own sakura crossbody purse uh, you can purchase the pattern uh, from my Etsy store. The link to the pattern is in the description box below. Also, if you would like to stay informed about uh, my new patterns release and have access to discount codes and promotions, uh, please uh, visit my Facebook group uh, and join the group. The link to the Facebook group is in the description box below. Till the next time.